possible to pick your favourite Hitchcock movie. It's kind of like picking a. I mean, if I don't say Psycho, I'm going to get into trouble, obviously. But um, no, I have to say, I, I, I loved Vertigo. There was something so sort of tender and personal about the film, and you know that that frustration at having the thing that you know not being able to have the thing you want, and that sort of yearning and all that sort of desire, I think, is so sort of perfectly revealed in that film. As a, a filmmaker, as a film lover, do you remember your first interaction, your first experience of the work of Hitchcock? Actually, it was Psycho when I was 15. I started a film club at my school, and we would go down to Soho Square and get these 16 mil prints and bring them back. And I remember in the first month, the first three films were Don't Look Now, Easy Rider, and Psycho. And I remember seeing Psycho at 15 and being traumatised to the point that I couldn't do anything for like 10 years. Now, what did you learn about Alfred making the movie that you didn't know? So many things. I mean, we went to the Academy, we got all his papers. And, um, you know, we, we got his grocery bills. This was the amazing thing, is that he lived a relatively, you know, restrained Hollywood sort of lifestyle, but the consumption of foie gras, wine, you know, they had the most modern, incredible kitchen in the entire uh, Hollywood. They, they, he really ate and drank a lot. He would call up foie, uh, Maxime's of Paris and have foie gras flown from Paris to London, London to New York, and then New York to California. And so in 1959, that was $900 a trip every two weeks. And you think about <laughs> that kind of expenditure. So it was, uh, it was, in a strange way, a, a deeply lavish sort of consumptive lifestyle. So when we went to the Academy and got his papers and the grocery bills, I think that was a bit of a shock, how much they spent on food and wine. Um, a lot of people don't realize how influential his wife was on his work. Absolutely. Uh, without her and, and the ball that she had, yeah. surely he wouldn't have done a lot of what he did. Well, I think that, you know, it's been said that Hitch wouldn't have been Hitch without her. I think that's largely true. I think that he made a huge, huge contribution. Uh, she made a huge contribution to his work, and, and he was the first one to point it out. Uh, he would constantly give her credit. He would bring her in. He would trust her opinion. Uh, if there was something that he wasn't sure about, he would ask, you know, what, what the what her opinion was. Like, for example, the psycho music by Bernard Herrmann, that famous cue in the shower scene. Alma insisted that that be in the film. Hitchcock wanted simply a montage with the sound of running water and screams. And Alma said, you have to put Bernie's cue in. And he, he listened to it, uh, listened to it a second time and said, I believe my earlier suggestion might have been inappropriate. You know, he, he really ultimately, at the end of the day, even uh, against his best wishes, would trust her advice. That's brilliant. Thank you very much. Love the movie. Thank Fantastic so work. Yeah,